Here's a little piece of NWB history for you. I went and got the 30 pound and the 40 pound dumbbells from my parents' house, the old home gym. These are the OG dumbbells I started training with back in the old like 9, 2009 days, crazy. This right here is my home gym's mirror, specifically this plaque. No lie, I don't have a mirror, so I'll stand right here and just kinda be able to see myself just enough to see like my form, or at least the illusion of my form. At the very least, I can try to get my ass motivated by looking at these of a day when I was shredded. Always make sure you're stocked up on wine when you have to be locked down for a while. And always make sure you got the music, man. Happy quarantine, everyone. I hope everyone's staying sane, locked away in their houses, growing their hair out nice and crazy, and slowly losing their gains. I know I am. At this rate of not seeing a barber and not hitting the gym, I'm gonna look like a lollipop soon enough. Up here is gonna be fucking crazy, and the body's gonna go back to my ectomorphic boy days, and uh, it'll be lovely. I can't wait. Um, a little bit of good news for you guys at the very end of this video to help lighten spirits up. I'm giving away $1,000 in gift cards just as a heads up, so make sure you stay tuned or at least check out the end of this video for that. And without further ado, let's get into the home workout. Now, it is true that you are not going to be able to maintain your powerlifting strength progress while working out at home with limited resources. A lot of powerlifters have said, if it's that important to you, go and invest in a barbell, in a bench, in a power rack, in some weights. Make a home gym for yourself, it's worth it. Now, if you are headed to like USAPL Nationals where you know you're gonna kill it and place top five, and you have the financial means to go and invest in a gym really quick and it's not gonna hurt your finances, and you have the place to put a home gym, then hell yes, you should absolutely do that if you can find the equipment. Right now, supply and demand is uh, kind of on the rocks. Demand's so high that there's not a lot of supply anymore. Facebook market's drying up when it comes to weightlifting equipment. Even buying stuff brand new like at Rogue, there's a, a much longer wait on things right now because everyone's trying to scramble to make a home gym for themselves now. So it's a little harder to find things and get them quickly. A lot of people are out of work, out of jobs. They're already tight on money. Investing in weights is not gonna be at the top of their priority. It doesn't make sense to go and invest in that. And then as far as having a place to put it, you know, if you have your own place and you have a basement or a garage, awesome. Not everybody has that luxury. Some people are living with roommates. Some people are sharing an apartment where they can't put any sort of a home gym. Even me, like I own this place and it's ironic for me because I started off in a home gym at my parents' house back in the day. And then I built an awesome home gym at the old trap house in the basement. Now I own this place. This is a rental property though. I want to rent this out. I don't want to go and tear up my basement. So I don't want to take the carpet out of my basement I don't want to flip my basement inside out to put a home gym in there that I'm not gonna use after this lockdowns over I, I learned that the hard way too I went and built this awesome home gym at the trap house I never used the thing I mean I used it once in a while but I, I love going to the gym way more than a home gym I just like the energy at an actual gym so as soon as this lockdowns over I'm not gonna be using the thing and then when I move out of this place to rent it out I'm gonna have to haul that whole gym with me and I learned the hard way learn hauling a home gym out of a place it's worse than paying taxes. What do we do? Well, you're gonna lose some gains in the power on the power train. You're gonna lose a little bit of progress in the strength. I mean, I'm feeling it worse than a lot of people. You guys saw my numbers. I went to a 425 bench, a 645 or 640 deadlift. Uh, I was hitting new rep PRs on the deadlift. I was building towards a 600 pound squat. My numbers in the gym were going up like a US rocket back in 1969, and now all of that's on hold. But I don't really give a fuck. What I'm doing during this lockdown is I'm just accepting that that's something I can't control unless I wanna build a home gym, which I don't. So I'm putting my focus elsewhere mentally, trying to stay busy in other things right now. And as far as working out goes, I'm doing what I can to maintain what I can. I have the little ass dumbbells that are not gonna get me far strength wise, but I can definitely work on building my shoulders up. I can work on building my arms up with those bad boys. I can get the back and the chest has pumped up with those bad boys and I can even do some lighter but higher intensity higher repetition leg stuff with those bad boys especially a lot of unilateral leg stuff that really sucks but it's really good even if you're not making crazy gains strength wise guys maintaining a 
and trying to make as many gains as you can, even if they're minimal, is still better than doing nothing. Don't just give up, sit back on the couch and, and grow a dad bod during this lockdown. Stay active, as active as you possibly can. At least stay fit, stay healthy, stay in shape. So here's an example of what I'm doing for my upper body days right now. And the beauty about doing lighter weight is you can now do it more frequently. You can train three or four times in a week instead of twice a week, because you're not getting as beat up. And the key to when you're using lightweight is to make lightweight feel harder than it is. So high reps, slow and controlled reps, time under tension is your best friend here. Changing positions around so they feel a little bit harder than a typical position. So for this workout, I'm starting off with shoulders and I'm using the 30 pound dumbbells. Side lateral raises, I'm doing three sets of 15 reps. Now fortunately, 30 and 40 pound dumbbells isn't super light for me for lateral raises. So I can keep my tempo pretty normal here. It is just light enough to where I keep my reps nice and high. So three sets of 15 with them, then I bump up to the 40s. And I try to do three more sets of 15. The lowest I'll go is 12. So I start off with at least 15 for set number four. Maybe on set number six, I'm getting a little tired. I might drop it down to 12, but I at least squeeze out 12. Six total sets, 15 to 12 reps. A lot of volume right there. Nice squeezing at the top of each rep. Then we move to rear delts, bent lateral raises. And uh, I do the same thing. 3x15, three 3x15 by 15, three by 15 with 30 pounds and then 40 pounds. Again, no lower than 12 on those last sets if I start getting really fatigued. Shoulders are on fire, they're burning right now, feeling great. Then chest, now I like doing shoulders before chest. Since we can't go heavy on chest, chest is gonna get minimal treatment here. So burn out the shoulders first, pre-exhaust the shoulders so they can't help out the chest as well. And if you wanna go a step further with this, you can actually implement dumbbell raises to the front, front raises. I didn't do those today, but those are definitely a great exercise as well. But burn those shoulders out first. And that goes for shoulder pressing as well. We don't have heavy dumbbells to shoulder press with, so save them for the end of the shoulder workout. Make your shoulders as fatigued as possible and then shoulder press. It's gonna make those light dumbbells feel just a little bit heavier. And of course, also switch up your tempo. Really slow tempo negatives. Get a nice deep stretch at the bottom. Time under tension, but again, pre fatigue pre-exhaust the shoulders first before you do any pressing do your strongest lifts last then for chest what I started off doing is floor pressing and uh, I started off with a sort of wide -er ish grip but I'm keeping my grip a lot closer than I do on the bench as you'll see it's almost like a close grip position if that were a barbell and I find this puts it on the triceps more it's gonna fatigue those triceps a little bit more, making the pressing a little bit harder. A close grip press is always gonna be harder than a regular wider grip press. So you'll feel it in your triceps, which is awesome. And at the very top of the rep, you really feel the squeeze in your chest. And the biggest thing is push up fast and squeeze that chest together. Push those biceps into your chest as you lock out those arms, squeeze that chest together. And with the feet up in the air, I found I feel the tension in my chest the most, right in that center to upper chest area, which is amazing. And exactly what we talked about when we mentioned a flat back bench back in my bench series. So I'll do like six sets of 15 with this and I'll superset it with a floor fly which is just a pec fly, except your elbows obviously stop a little bit higher than they normally would on a bench. And um, you wanna make sure those arms stay outside of your elbows at a 45 degree angle, angled outward away from your body. Now that's not the most ideal position for your elbows to be in with weight on them. But again, we're using lightweight, so it shouldn't be a problem and you'll definitely feel a great squeeze in your chest. So again, supersetting 15 reps with the close grip floor press, squeezing at the top, superset it with 12 to 15 reps on flies, six sets total. That's a lot of volume right there. You can also throw in Push-ups, of course, you can do inverted push-ups where your feet are up on a bench or a stool or a chair, which is gonna put your body in the decline position, but because you're facing the ground, it's actually gonna mimic an incline press. Next up for arms, I mean, arms is easy as cake here. 30, 40 pound dumbbells is all you need. Dumbbell curls, three sets of 15 to 12 with 30 pounds, then up to 40 pounds. And I like doing them both arms at a time it forces you to really make that core nice and tight, and it forces you to pin those elbows hard against your sides, and it feels a little harder than doing them alternating. When you alternate, you can kind of lean into each arm a little bit more, making it easier. This way, I feel like it's a little harder, but of course, do whatever feels better for you. Alternating or both at the same time isn't gonna make a huge difference. It's just, it's just a preference thing. I alternate between biceps and triceps. I don't superset. I finish all three sets of biceps first, then move on to triceps, but I do go biceps, three Three sets, triceps, three sets, biceps, three sets, triceps, three sets, four exercises total, two each. So then I move on to triceps, single arm, overhead dumbbell extensions. I love these, these have always been one of my favorite tricep builders. 30 pounds, 
easy 15 reps up to 12 reps. You can go up to the 40s if you want. Um, and same deal, I, I did about five sets here, 15 to 12 reps, squeezing really hard. Also with these, make sure when you extend the arm, the knuckles are towards the ceiling. You don't wanna finish the rep with the, above the dumbbell up towards the ceiling with a bent wrist. You wanna keep that dumbbell parallel with the ceiling above you. My last movement on biceps was pinwheel hammer curls. Um, they're hammer curls, but they're just tilted in towards your body. So hammer curls are arms to your side, fists coming straight out. Pinwheels are the same thing, just with the hand across the body now. So you're curling them hammer style, but across the body instead of out in front of you. And I love these, building up that brachialis, that little bump in between the bicep and the tricep. Three sets of 10, squeezing like crazy. And I do one arm at a time with these. I don't alternate right arm, then left arm, then right arm. I do all 10 reps in my right arm, then all 10 reps on my left arm. And this makes it so I'm not giving my arm a break between reps. When you alternate, when you curl one, and you curl over here, one, this right arm gets to have a break now. Same with the left arm, it takes a break. So when you do them all at once like this, that's time under tension on one arm. That arm's not getting a break, that time under tension's attacking that bicep, it's gonna make the, the lift a lot harder, it's gonna burn your biceps out a lot better. Last but not least, dumbbell skull crushers laying on the floor, constant tension is key. Uh, three to five sets of 15 reps with these, starting with 30 pounds, working up to the 40 pounds and they burn. And boom, right there, we just got a badass upper body day in. And like I said, it's lighter weight now, so we can do this three times a week. I don't care if we're not benching 425 anymore. This is still gonna blow up those delts, make the upper body pop. I mean, shit, if I can't be an awesome powerlifter right now, let me shift my attention towards at least fine tuning the physique while I'm on lockdown. lockdown. Again, guys, doing what you can is still better than doing nothing at all, unless you wanna invest in equipment. So try that out, let me know what you think. And now on to the giveaway. All right guys, $1,000 in gift card giveaways happening right now with Alpha Clothing. So how this works is pretty actually badass. Chance to get a lot of shit for free and for low price at the same time. They're having a huge warehouse sale right now. It's only a week long, it ends the 31st. So right now, Everything is super, super low priced already on sale. And during this sale, you can use the code NICK25 to get another 25% off on top of the sales. So that's a lot of money off, damn near free clothing. And if you're familiar with Alpha Clothing's quality, you know this is rare. The code ends the 31st as well as the sale. So where the gift card comes in is at the end of this week when the sale is over, they're literally just gonna go through every order that came in using the code NICK25, they're gonna select 10 people who used that code and they're gonna give them $100 each, a $100 gift card each. 10 different people can win $100 gift cards for Alpha Clothing, as well as stock up on stuff for a crazy huge sale right now using the code NICK25. Until the end of the week, alphaclothing.co, the link is in the info box below. Best of luck.